reveal a question about the Giants' secondary without Terry Kennard? Well, I really think, you know, it's the safety, the, Welsh, the rookie safety back there, not rookie, but inexperienced. I think they'll try to work the ball in behind him a little bit. Number 27, Sit back and enjoy. It's coming up on CBS, the Giants and the 49ers. Two Super Bowl victories are a testament to Bill Walsh's cerebral approach to football. His architect is Joe Montana, and the 49ers' blueprint for success lies with their passing game. Containing Dwight Clark and Jerry Rice is a nightmare for any defense, and today, that nightmare becomes a reality for the Giants. Rising to a challenge is what Bill Parcells and his Giants defense have done all season long. They are perhaps football's most punishing unit, possessing many weapons. And if defense is the soul of the Giants, their linebackers are the soul of the defense. Today, their sights are set squarely on Joe Montana as the Giants hope to continue their banner year. The 49ers feel they have a score to settle today because lately the Giants have had their number. It's a matchup of contrasting styles in a game of infinite importance. Sports presents the National Football League. Today it's the NFC Divisional Playoff game between the San Francisco 49ers and the New York Giants. In weather you wouldn't expect for this time of year. 30 degrees, forecast sunny and cold. You wouldn't expect it to be this good, but it is. Good afternoon, I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden and I think in talking to the 49ers yesterday and Bill Walsh particularly, John, they feel that they have a scheme, an offensive scheme particularly, that will work against the Giants. You know, yesterday was the most confident that I've ever seen Bill Walsh, and maybe he has reason to. You know, that any time he's been in a playoff game and he's had two weeks to prepare, he's 5-0. and Now, what did he prepare? Well, the biggest thing, I think, is they just played a month ago, they played the Giants, and they went into that game saying that they had to stop Joe Morris that they had to stop the run, and then, of course, in the second half, Phil Simms got to him. So this time he said, we're going to go after Phil Simms. He said, we're going to blitz. We're going to stay in our pass rush lane. We're going to stop the pass. No big plays. Let Morris get his 100 yards, but they aren't going to beat us with the pass. That, of course, is not to say that the Giants don't have a lot of confidence, too. Bill Parcell said one thing to you yesterday, I know, that, that sticks in both of our minds. He said, if I do have a question, it would be the secondary. Well, you know what he's worried about the secondary is, is his best players are his line and his, and his linebackers, the front seven. And, and he's worried about his secondary, not as much covering, but his tackling once they get the ball there. I know last time they played a loose zone against the 49ers, and the 49ers ate him up in the first half. They had a 17-0 late. In the second half, they tightened up that zone. So they're going to start that way today. On offense, he says we have to be able to run the ball. Joe Morris has to have a big day. I wouldn't be surprised if they go to a lot of two tight ends. The other thing the Giants have today is they just activated Lionel Manuel, who's been their leading receiver the last two years. So they have some more weapons. The Giants will receive the kickoff. Ray Wershing back to kickoff number 14 for the 49ers. And back deep for the Giants, Lee Roussan and Kenny Hill. Kenny Hill in the last couple of years, in playoffs particularly, has been most effective. And returning these kicks, it's going to be Teddy Hill. Took it away from Roussan. About a yard deep in the end zone. Never mind this time and that effectiveness because he's out to the 15, stopped by Bill Ring. Bill Sims, of course, will start at quarterback for the Giants, and he'll look at this 49er defense. Up front, Tui Asasopo and Ford on the ends. Michael Carter in the middle. The linebackers, McCall, Ellison, Von Horst, and Keena Turner. Secondary, the two rookies on the corners, McKire and Griffin. Williamson and Locke, the safety. Two tight ends they start with early. A gain of perhaps three by Maurice Carthorn, stopped by Michael Carter. Let's look down at the Giants' offense. Sims, the quarterback. Morris and Carthorn, the runners. Johnson and Robinson, the wide receivers. 
front. Bensonard, Oates, Godfrey, Nelson, and Mark Bavaro. Robinson is out. And Lionel Manuel is in. Split wide to the left. Second and seven. Again, it's two tight ends. Bavaro on the right. Moat on the left. And off Morris. Nothing there. Carter hit him first. Got away from him. Picked up one. Ronnie Lott up in the middle. He's finally stopped by Green Ford. There's Lionel Manuel. You know, Lionel Manuel has been out, really, for 12 weeks. Most of this season. The last two seasons, he's been their leading wide receiver. And Bill Parcells thought that maybe he was ready for the last regular season game, but he didn't want to activate him at that time. He felt he was ready to play, and he was going to bring him back in the playoffs. And now Sims will operate out of the spread formation. He has Tony Galbraith back with him. Bill McConkey in motion. 49ers in his face, incomplete. McConkey, the intended receiver, but the 49ers were there in a hurry, led by... Charles Haley. Well, you know, that's what Bill Wall says they're going to do. He says, we're going to get up there and we're going to pressure him. We're going to get right in his face. There's Charles Haley coming right up the middle as Phil Sims was throwing the ball. Last time, he said, we gave him too much time and too many passing lanes. Right in his face. And Pro Bowl punter Sean Landetta back to punt for the Giants. And Don Griffin back deep for the 49ers. Good kick by Landetta. Griffin retreats to his own 33. And the Giants are down in a hurry, led by Greg Lasker. 48-yard punt, return of four. Byron Hunt, number 57, also there. 49er quarterback Joe Montana. And the defense he'll look at, one of the best. Martin, Burt, and Marshall up front. Linebacking core of Banks, Reasons, Carson, and Lawrence Taylor. And in the secondary, Patterson and Williams on the corners. Kenny Hill and Herb Welch, the safety. Terry Kennard missing. First down, 49ers, their own 37. Montana to work. Roger Craig. Craig out of bounds after a pickup of about eight. Lawrence Taylor knocked him out. He might have gotten more than that. Montana, the quarterback. Cribs and Craig, the runners. Clark and Rice, wide receivers. Russ Francis, the tight end, Fonhorst, Cross, Quillen, McIntyre, and Bubba Paris on the left side with the challenge for most of the day of blocking Lawrence Taylor. Close to a first down for the 49ers. Remarkable man, Montana. The recovery from the injury, the back surgery, and again, they're measuring over on the sideline. Jerry Mark Bright is the referee. It really is, John. The comeback, the recovery, whatever you want to call it, the determination or whatever of Joe Montana, remarkable. Well, you know, he's that he's that type of guy. I mean, he's a, he's the type of guy that, that that never showed pain. And then when he got the back and then the surgery and and and, and coming back, he said he knew that he was going to play. And he just had to get back in there and just block out the pain. And he was able to do that. And, you know, here's here's what the 49ers have done with Montana and without him. And as the players will tell you, when he comes back, everyone plays better. Even defensive players. Even the kicker kicks better when Joe Montana's there. Second and one. It's only about a foot. The handoff is to Craig. He's got it. Harry Carson tripped him up. A gain of four by Roger Craig. Amazing thing, one of, one of the things that Bill Wall said yesterday, remember last year when the Giants beat the 49ers in the game here in the playoffs, beat them 17 to 3, it was worse than that. But Wall said, if I had known how bad Montana was hurting that day, I would not have played it. Right, and I think that, you know, Roger Craig was about the same way. Remember, he had two bad knees in that game. Montana intended for Clark, incomplete. Williams, the defender. You know, as you look at Montana, I was watching him on tape, and I saw a couple of games on television. I thought, since he's come back, he's looked different. And, you know, I mean, you know that he had the back surgery. Maybe it's just knowing that. But what it is is he's lost weight. You know, he lost like 15 pounds. And he was never, you know, a heavy guy anyway. And uh, it was...
was he was down to about 180 from his normal 195. He's gained some of it back, but he's still thin. Two tight ends for the 49ers now. Trips and Craig. Montana quickly to Jerry Rice. And he's got some speed. He drops the ball. Rice chases it. Doesn't come up with it. Goes into the end zone. The scramble continues. And the Giants come up with it. He had a touchdown. Tell you, that is unbelievable. That is an artificial turf turnover. You know what happens is you start to run. Sometimes your foot will get caught. It just gives you an extra bump. Look at this. He's open here. He catches a pass against Elvis Patterson. Runs by the free safety. Herb Welch just drops the ball down his leg, knees it, pushes it forward into the end zone, and the Giants recover. Kenny Hill came up with it finally. Montana and the 49ers thought they had a touchdown, and they did. But the pill got away, and the Giants will take over. They'll have it at their own 20. Nothing, nothing. Giant ball at their own 20 after Rice had a touchdown in sight and lost the football. And first down is back to Mars. And Morris could be off. Lott finally herds him out of bounds. First down, Giants, a pickup of 16. That's more yards than he got in a regular season meeting. Back to Jerry Rice and his let's, problem. Let's watch it again. Here, he's going to come in here, catch a slant right about here. Welsh comes here. Patterson comes here. Rice runs right by him and fumbles here just after he changes up. Watch him here. The slant, Montana, right on the run. Now watch here. The, the left hand, the ball just hit his chest in the running motion. Sims again to Morris. Morris, left side. Up close to the 40 in a game of five. Ricky Ellison on the bottom of the pile for the 49ers. Well, I think Morris has gained more this first quarter than he gained the last game, the last time they played. 13 rushes for 14 yards. However, but, uh, you know, you know uh, uh, Bill Parcells was kidding his offensive line, and he was calling him Club 13 this week. Morris got six that time, second and four. Bobby Johnson, the man in motion, sends again to Morris, and Morris, a giant first down outside the 45, a gain of six, tripped up by Tui Asisopo. You know, that, that meeting, that first one, that yardage, that statistic you were just talking about, although he only got 13 yards, there was one big run in that game. Well, that was the thing. The 49ers were going to stop Morris, and... They did for most of the day, but the big play in that game to me was when they went for it on fourth down, the Giants did, they handed it to Joe Morris, and he made the first down. The play that the 49ers had to stop him on, they didn't. Lionel Manuel is split wide to the right. Now he's on the move, and Sims back to throw. And this time he has time. Ball batted down by Charles Haley, I think. You know, Charles Haley is just a rookie. He's out of James Madison, and he's really been the best pass rusher on this 49er team. I remember I, I was in training camp when he started, and he just came in, and he was a natural pass rusher. You know, the blockers at that time just couldn't block him. He has great speed. He has long arms, and he has a natural instinct to rush a passer. And that really is something you can't coach. That's like being a great runner, that instinct. Here's Sims to Morris. Morris close to a first down again in the 49er territory. McHire finally tripped him up. That should be enough. You know, most of the success that Joe Morris has running is to the right side in this very play. You see that lead block by Maurice Carthon. He's the guy that springs Morris at the line of scrimmage. You know, it was funny, the Giants rated their top three blockers were the guys that blocked at the point of attack four over. Carl Nelson was number one, Carthon two, and Chris Godfrey three. On the right side, you don't hear too much about those guys. Here's Sims back to throw. Last time again up the middle of Carthon. Down to the 49er 35. A gain of seven. Ricky Ellison stopped him. You know, there's 
a guy who, who you don't hear a lot about because he doesn't carry the ball a lot and he doesn't catch passes a lot. But he's just like having another guard in there. And I think if Joe Morris, you know, if he buys his line anything or any of those type of deals, he ought to include Carthon in that gift list. That 225 is not quite enough. He's bigger than that. Roussan now in the game in place of Morris. Manual in motion. Roussan the ball carrier. On to the 30 of another Giant first down. A gain of five. Stopped by Ford. The Giants on the move. I think this is the type of game that Bill Parcells wanted to play. You know, where, where we just run. We establish what we can run. We run Joe Morris. We give him a little rest with Roussan, and then we just mix in the pass. We don't run every play, nor pass every play, but just keep moving the chains. Marcel's just talking to Morris, saying, are you ready? Morris said yes. But it's still Roussan. Sims to throw. Outside, Roussan. He comes down with it. It is a catch. It's a gain of four. Keena Turner was covering. Yeah, we'll see. Roussan just come at the left of the screen. Just front of flat. Good pass protection. You see, Sims has that lane between his offensive guard and his tackle to get the ball out to Rasan, who makes a great catch. You know how good this guy is going to be. You know, don't forget that Otis Anderson is on this giant team. Joe Morris is first. Rasan is now second. Morris back. Hit and missed about the line of scrimmage and twists down for a gain of a couple. Stopped by Tui Asasopo and Michael Carter. Tui Asasopo is usually a nose tackle. He's more of a, a nose tackle type of guy than he is an end. But Jeff Stover, their normal starting left end, has a knee injury. So Tui Asasopo has to play left end. And then, of course, Michael Carter is a nose tackle. He had to gain weight so they could get his name on his jersey. Yeah, but Carter didn't. No. Manual in motion. Sam back with protection. For Bavaro, touchdown. insurance but i hate spending money on something i hope i'll never use and won't be around to enjoy if it ever is used leave it to the good hands people all state has life insurance that pays you for living all state universal life it protects your family if you die and it can provide competitive earnings for your retirement so my family's set if i'm gone and i'm in the money if i stick around <laughs> i think i'll stick around you're in good hands with all state a member of the sears financial network T-Card, your people have the power to handle business better. From anywhere to anywhere. Come on, Clark. Uh, it's okay, Mo. Everything's taken care of. You always disappear in an emergency. Order the AT&T card. It gives your people enormous abilities. Ten years ago, Honda gave the automotive world a moving target. The Honda Accord. Since then, Car makers the world over have taken their best shots 
at hitting the combination of engineering, workmanship, performance, and price. They've all missed. Back at Giants Stadium, 24-yard touchdown pass from Sims to Bavaro. The Giants lead it 7-0 deep for the 49ers think this is not the playoffs Joe Cribbs is number 28 Roger Craig is number 33 back returning kicks Allegre puts the foot to it it's going to be Cribbs at his own 12 steps out of one tackler steps out of another gets a good return outside the 40 Harry Williams finally knocked him down what's a touchdown again here's Tim McKayer the corner Lionel Manuel goes in motion. McKayer comes in with him. Now he's looking at him, and Bavaro is here. He is going to get deep on him because by the time McKayer figures out that he has to get back here, Bavaro is about here. But just to see the motion starts in, McKayer starts in, does right. Now he sees Bavaro, but by the time he does, Bavaro has to step on him. 49ers open with two tight ends in their second series. Craig right side, not much doing. Gary Reason and Banks on the bottom of the blue pile. I'll tell you who made the play on that is Carl Banks. Banks was on Russ Francis, and he took Francis and put him in the backfield. Watch, it's going to come out here to the right. Now watch, right there at the left of the screen, you see 58 Banks? He takes Francis, knocks him in the backfield. That knocks off the guard, Randy Cross, and it frees up all those blue jerseys. Second and eight. Montana to Roger Craig, same play, other side. Flag down as Craig gets out of bounds. Right in front of the 49er bench, knocked out by Herb Welsh. Penalty marker down, however. Could be against the 49ers. I think someone held Lawrence Taylor looked like he was tackled. It's a good idea. Well, the ball went right outside of Taylor. And I think, Mark, the, right? I think it was Wendell Tyler, the halfback, who was leading on Taylor. Holding number 28, offense. Cribs. Second down. It is. It was Joe Cribs. He's the back leading. Now, watch Taylor. He's going to come. Now, there's Cribs, 28. You see, he just goes and tackles his right knee. <laughs> that was no doubt about that when he just went in there and tackled him. Good technique. If you're tackling. Marjoram, now the third wide receiver for the 49ers. Here comes the giant blitz. Montana gets rid of it quickly, but it's Marjoram. Stopped by Welch. Pickup of 12. Joe Montana is probably the toughest quarterback in the league to get rid of. I think the average quarterback throws the ball in about three seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Joe Montana will release the ball about half that. And you just can't get to him. And I know Lawrence Taylor was saying it's so frustrating. He said, I don't think I've ever had a good hit on him. And he said, for a hyper guy like me, he's the toughest guy to play against. It's just frustrating. He's so quick. Montana back to throw. Going deep for Clark. Pass almost picked off by Perry Williams. Montana under pressure. Just put it up for grabs. Clark almost came down with it, and so did Williams. It looks like the ball was coming off his head. Watch the, the ball. It's right up there on top. And we'll see Perry Williams, the fastest player in the giant team. Clark isn't going to outrun him, but Clark outjumped him. And it looked like he had it over his helmet. And maybe Williams' helmet knocked it out of there. And you're not going to run by Perry Williams. You're going to have to put some kind of fake on him. Runniger, back to kick. And a good high hanger from McConkey to handle. Sickles, fair catch, lets it go over his head. The 49ers, Bill Ring, knocks it out of bounds. Inside the five, I think he touched it about the six, and that's probably where they'll mark it. 47-yard punt by Runniger, no return. 7-0 Giants. What was that? The 
boogeyman from the Black Lagoon. There's something out there. Don't worry. As long as the lights are on, we're fine. What do we do now? Run for your life! It's time to change your light bulb. Philips Longer Life Square Bulbs last 33% longer than ordinary round bulbs. Bertie! Why hasn't this package been picked up? You call them. I already called them ten times. Hold it. If you'd called Federal Express, you wouldn't be having this problem. Come with me. Only federal trucks have onboard computers. Uh -huh. So our couriers know the instant you have a package for pickup. Uh -huh. So we can pick it up on time. Uh -huh. Next time, call Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? I will call Federal, and I'll get you off my back and everybody else off my back. Man, skiing sure is fun. You run into lots of nice people out there. Yeah, we ran into Corky yesterday. So that's for sure. And afterward, there's nothing like a warm fire. Oh. And a cold nor light. Light really tastes great. And it's less filling. And us hot doggers don't like to get filled up. Speaking of hot dogs, where's you girl? You. Great seat, hey, buddy. Ah, ah, hey, where are all the guys? They're missing all the fun. For great taste, there's only one light beer. Miller Light. It's some of college basketball's most colorful, controversial, and winningest coaches as Indiana meets Ohio State or see St. John's face Villanova on CBS Sports. Next. The Giants 7, the 49ers nothing. 5.34 left first quarter. We're at Giants Stadium. Playoff game between the Giants and the 49ers. Both have had time to rest. Both look sharp so far. Sims overthrows Stacy Robinson. Incomplete. Don Griffin, the defender. You know, starting this game, we were talking about the quarterback's release time. We can see that they're both getting rid of the ball quickly. Montana is 2.3, and usually on his real quick ones, is about 1.5. Sims has been 2.6. Now, usually, he holds the ball much longer than that. About three seconds would be considered, I think, to be normal. So that's quick for both of them. to 15, a gain of six, Michael Walter and Carlton Williamson, who plays many times like a linebacker, up to make the stop. And that's the guy that they have to block. Now, when they run this side, they have to block Carlton Williamson. They tried to do it with a guard last time. This time they said they're going to do it with a fullback. Let Carthon have Carlton Williamson. Get on him. You see how he gets up there? Watch him. He's right up there. Now the ball starts there. He gets up and lands for it. Boom, right there. Carthon gets him. And that's the block that lets Morris get five yards. Look out for number 49. The 49ers have their pass rush troops in there. Fuller, 49. And that play intended Carthon. Pressure on Sim. Fuller didn't come, but the rest of them did. You know, you watch the defensive line of the 49ers stunning now. Last time they didn't do that. They were stopping the run. Here we see the twists and the turns, and they're always going to have someone in Sims' face. Not let him have that step up and clean release. That time it was Stover. Here's Glendon at a punt, and another good one. Griffin retreats to his own 39. Fuller gets a block in front of him. Griffin out of bounds at about the 46 by Robbie Jones. 46-yard punt by Landetta. A return of seven. With four and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter, the Giants over the 49ers, seven to nothing. Pat Summerall, John Madden at Giants Stadium, where the Giants lead the 49ers, seven to nothing. A 24-yard touchdown pass from Phil Sims to Mark Bavaro. to the Giant 40, and again, Montana with that quick release. Harry Williams brought Rice down. Well, you know, it was the same type of play that Rice had that wide-open touchdown that he fumbled on. It's a slant. He ran it from the right side, this time from the left side. They had two tight ends on the right side, Giant defense, overplay to that side, and then, boom, they hit the slant in there. Now, watch how quickly he releases that ball. And a crap right now, 1.6. The rush can't get there. Not even if no one blocks. Handoff is to Cribbs. Right 
inside for two. Not much doing. Stopped by Burt. Well, you know, Bill Walsh has those first 25 plays scripted. And he knows, and he knew last night, and he knew today, what plays he was going to run. You see him looking there. Now, what he did is he took the best plays that they had all year, and he made them part of the first 20. Now, also part of the first 20, he said, off all these plays, he has a counter play that he'll use in the second half. Second and eight. That's Craig to the giant 35, tripped up by Carson, knocked down by Carson, more appropriate. Gain of three. You know, there was a thing in Roger Craig's locker about what Harry Carson said in his book about Roger Craig. And he was quoting some song or something, you know, like, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you look, I will look. Wherever you be, I will, be. you know, something like that. And Harry put in his book after the wild card game last year. So someone put it on Craig's locker this week. Montana back on third down to Russ Francis, and that'll be enough for the first. Francis still on his feet. Hit from behind by Carson, out of bounds, but a 49er first down inside the giant 15. You know, and that's what, that's what Bill Parcells was worried about yesterday in secondary. Not covering as much as tackling. Watch here, here's Francis, a short guy underneath. Watch Kenny Hill, 48, come up, miss. That's what he said. That's the thing that we can't have. We play zone defense, they're going to catch him with Montana. We can't let him run through our secondary. Gary Reasons comes in, and Pepper Johnson gets out in a hurry. Montana goes to work in a hurry. Over the right side to about the 12 is Roger Craig. Stopped by Reasons, who just barely made it into the game. You see here, they have... They have 12, they got 12, they got 12. They finally got 11 just before the ball was snapped. As Pepper Johnson leaving. Second and six, 49ers. They're at the giant 12. Just over two minutes left in the first quarter. And the 49ers on the move. Cribs inside. Hit by George Martin. Just as he passed the 10-yard line. He only got a couple. number 75 a lot of people said over the years that he was just a pass rusher but when they lost Curtis McGriff Martin had to play on every down and has played extremely well Clark is wide right Rice wide left third down and four Montana over the head of Clark and out of the end zone and Worshing will come on I'm sure Well, you know, one thing about Wershing, as he comes on, that he's not going to look up. He's the type of guy that's going to keep his head down when he kicks the ball, and he's going to keep his head down as he runs on the field. Watch him there. He's feeling his holder, Mike Morosky. He's going to let Morosky spot the ball for him. You know what he said to me yesterday? What? Wershing, he said, do you remember any old excuses <laughs> that I might not have heard of that I might could use? Well, they were coming out to practice. Well, I'll tell you, he's been kicking in this league for 14 years. He ought to have them all. One you're not going to get is that he lifted his head. He, I didn't see him miss all day yesterday. And today, he's good again from 26 yards. And it's 7-3. Walsh. And a guy, number 80, who he thinks, and I think a lot, most people agree, Jerry Rice is going to be one of the one of the outstanding players in professional football for a long, long time. Yesterday, in case you don't know, and I'm sure most of you do, Cleveland in two overtimes, the field goal by Mosley beat the New York Jets 23-20. And a rather shocking occurrence at Soldier Field to a lot of people. John Madden and Pat Summerall, too. Washington 27. The Bears 13. Our score right now in the first quarter is 7-3. New England and Denver, uh, Denver play later this afternoon. You're know, talking about that Washington game. I, I thought they were so beat up yeah. going into Chicago. I didn't see how they could win, but I think those guys really have to be congratulated. I mean, those players for 
playing that physical game, a short week, coming back, going to Chicago, and doing it again, I think is amazing. But I think Joe Gibbs and his staff, too, getting that team ready in that short time, I thought it was an impossibility. I really did. Kenny Hill and Lee Roussan back deep. That's Roussan at the one. 49ers down quickly. Roussan hit by Ratman. After a gain of 17, good coverage by San Francisco. Rathman, you know, is the, was a, a, a draft choice out of Nebraska. He's a fullback. Good blocker, good on special teams, good tackler. Anytime you get a fullback out of Nebraska, the guy is going to be a good fundamentalist. He's going to be a good blocker, and you just saw there, that was a picture-perfect tackle. He looks like a guy who would make a picture-perfect tackle. Yeah, he had that, you see how his head was kind of flat from him. <laughs> it happens. Here's Morris, straight ahead. Struggling. A gain of two, Michael Carter. Made the stop. He's been hurting a bit. Yeah, I'll tell you, but he has that strength in the middle there. I mean, just watch 95 there. You see, he could hit with his right, play with his left. He has so much strength in that left shoulder, he just gave like a flex, and he knocked, he knocked Bart Oates off of him. I mean, those guys have big, big old arms and shoulders, and they just go poof like that, and guys move. Second down and seven. Eight make it. Black down, seems to throw. Pass batted away at the last second by Keena Turner. Headed for Joe Morris. Francisco. Upside, number 95, defense, second down. Michael Carter, the nose tackle of whom we just spoke, offside. Yeah, I've never known how a nose tackle can be offside. Look, look, you're right there in front of the ball. Now, you have to look at the ball move. Now, I don't, I don't know that he moved. That looked pretty good to me. Unless he lined up offside. He could have had his head in what they call the neutral zone. But had Morris on second down. Walter tripped him up. A gain of two. They needed three. You know, the thing is, though, you know, Walter, Michael Walter, 99 on that last play, he was a linebacker right up there next to Carter. Now, he was behind him. Now, he moved. But I don't know that Carter did. Let's see the same thing. See now, you see 99 moves. He's okay. I don't think Carter moved. I thought it looks good to me. I agree. But heck, those poor nose tackles in them, and they get double team, triple team, the whole thing. You got to give them a little advantage. The measure for the first down. It's not quite enough. Morris has nine carries already, and has gained 51 yards. Third down and about a foot, it would seem. You know, for a nose tackle, though, Michael Carter has had some pretty good things happen to him. Remember, he was in the Olympics yep. as a shot putter. And then that same year, he went to the 49ers and played in a Super Bowl game. So in one year, you have an Olympics and a Super Bowl. That's, that's a, a pretty good year for a guy in the pits. And they're back in the playoffs again. They trail right now, 7-3 at the end of the first quarter. Giant Stadium. Playoffs between the 49ers and Giants. Third and short. First play of the second quarter coming up. And the Giants lead San Francisco 7-3. Damian Johnson and William Roberts. Two backup offensive linemen. Johnson in the backfield with Morris right side of your picture. Moat in motion. They go to Morris. And Morris breaks out of the pack left side. First down and plenty more. Stopped by Tom Holmo. That's the play. John, that I don't think anyone else in the NFL runs. Well, you know what happened on that, on that play? Here they put Damon Johnson. He weighs 290. So he usually leads. He kind of fakes the lead, and then they hand it back to this side to Joe Morris right here. But watch, everyone thinks they're going to follow the 290-pound guy. Here comes the motion. 
Now he stops up, boom, they just hit it straight back, and Ooh. Morris goes back against the grain and away from Johnson. And Sims, with time, goes back to throw. It's Morris, and Morris is hit immediately by Carlton Williamson. Pass completion, but a gain of only two. Yeah, that Carlton Williamson, number 27 of the 49ers, is their strong safety, but he's kind of half a defensive back, half a linebacker. He led this team in tackles. And Bill Parcells is saying that's what makes the 49ers so tough to run against. You got the front seven, then you have Williamson up there. And he's a tough guy and a sure tackler. In the opinion of his teammates, he's had his best year. Here's Sims to Morris. Morris looking for some room, finds a little bit. Gets just shy of the 50-yard line before Tui Asasopo, Ronnie Lott, and Williamson again on the tackle. Yeah, we talked about Williamson, the guy who was the second leading tackler in the 49ers this season was Ronnie Lott, who's their other safety. So their two safeties were their leading tackler. And, of course, Ricky Ellison, the linebacker. And one of the reasons for that is Ronnie Lott was saying that he and Williamson said, we'll take care of everything. We have two rookie corners, Don Griffin and Tim McIver. You just worry about your men. They need three for a first down. They give it to Mark. What a hit by Ronnie Lott. Hey, Ronnie Lott is another guy who's a half a linebacker in there, and he loves that part of it. <laughs> Look at the way he walks. Square up those shoulders. He might be a whole linebacker. But watch him, 42. He's like a linebacker here. Watch him come across. He hits Morris and turns him back the other way. From the moment of contact, Morris never had another forward movement. Wow. Check his number. Landetta back to punt. Don Griffin back deep for the 49ers, standing at his own 10. Long time. Another good kick. Griffin signals fair catch, makes it at about the 11. 38-yard punt. Not all that impressive in distance, but... Anytime you get it down there, you'll take it. 7-3 the score at Giant Stadium. And don't forget the NFL on CBS, the playoffs, of which you're looking right now, the 49ers and the Giants. The NFC's divisional playoff game, the Giants lead 7-3. Touchdown pass from Phil Sims to Mark Bavaro from 24 yards out. The 49ers got the field goal, the three points from Ray Worsing. They have the ball at their own 12-yard line, first and 10. 12.07 left to play first half. Montana behind Clark. I know, I know. My fault. You know, the thing is that, that they really don't get there, you know, on a Joe Montana. I mean, they, you know, you wonder where's Lawrence Taylor? How come there's no sacks? We talk about it, that quick release. Something like that, he just goes boom, boom, and, and throws that thing, and there's no way you can get there. It's all a matter of timing. He didn't even look at Clark. He just whirled it through. Now he gives to Crib. Nothing doing for Crib by Carson and Burt. A loss of one. I think this is what the Giants want to do, is once you get them down here, don't let them get in sync. Keep them out of sync. Once you get some good field position or put them in bad field position, keep them down there. Really press them when you have them down here. A lot of blue shirts around the ball. The 49ers got both guards out across in front, but they couldn't get much done. Francis on the move. Montana again. Outside it comes to Griff. The Giants led by Carson are right there. The captain, right on the spot. Well, that's the thing Bill Parcell says you have to do in the zone. We have to tackle. He said, get him third and long. Let him throw that short thing and then come up and don't let him gain any more yards. Harry Carson learned that lesson. That's the thing that you have to do. If they're going to pass those short ones, just make them take the loss. Runniger is number four. Back to punt. Giants have ten men up there looking at him. They're going to 
try to block it. They don't get there, but they force a bad kick. McConkey comes up, lets it bounce. It gets away from him. He touched it. Now he got out of bounds. That may seem insignificant, but that was a good play by McConkey to bat it up into the air and then get out of bounds and not lose it. Ten and a half minutes left first half. We know one of the teams is going to be there. They're going to be the visiting team, of course, the Washington Redskins. The 49ers win today. Then the game is in San Francisco. The Giants win. It's back here again next week. And you make it to San Francisco by next week? I, yeah, I would, I, I'd leave Monday and I'd get there Thursday. And I'd be all ready to go, like Friday. <laughs> Bill Sims back to throw for Buffaro. both feet down. I think Carlton Williamson had a lot to do to talk him into that. It looked like he had one foot in, and the second foot didn't get there. He has possession now. There's one foot. He gets the left foot in, and then the right foot is out. Hey, yeah, that's finding the hole in a zone. You know, they they had the 49ers were in a zone, and Bavaro just went out there and got in that middle layer of the zone. Morris. Morris. Four. Humble. A loss of two. They're going to say Morris was down. The 49ers indicating they had it. But Morris had no chance. Tuiasa Sopo. Well, and the reason he had no chance is because Maurice Carthon didn't win that battle with Carlton Williamson that time. That was the thing they were worried about. Williamson getting penetration, getting in the backfield. So they assigned Carthen to him. But that time, Williamson still beat him. Let's see if we can watch it here. You see 27? He's up there in the backfield before Carthon could get to him. Ooh, that might have been a fumble. He's still up. Here's Sims. There's a flag. Sims throwing. That's almost picked off, but out of bounds. Stacy Robinson, the intended receiver. Don Griffin, the defender, who almost came down with the interception. Tony Galbraith indicating to the giant bench that it's against us. Well, I'm sure the 49ers are going to turn it down anyway. Number 60, offense, penalty decline, fourth down. Brad Benson, number 60, pro bowl bound as well but had the job of containing Charles Haley. And you get one of those quick guys to jump early sometimes. Landetta standing at his own 30. Griffin for the 49ers back at his own 15. Good high kick. Boy, this is a rocket. Into the end zone. 55-yard punt by Landetta. He really caught that one. Not only long, but high. 9.26 left first half. Yes, right now, plenty of action here at Giants Stadium. Pat Summerall, John Madden. Giants lead the 49ers 7-3. Nine and a half minutes left first quarter. Here's Cribs. Trying to get outside. Banks with another solid good play. I'll tell you, Carl Banks is a good player. You know, you hear about the giant linebackers and... Of course, you hear about Lawrence Taylor. He led the league in sacks. You hear about Harry Carson's kind of the leader. But this Banks is really one of the good players. I mean, that's the second time we've seen him handle Russ Francis, who's one of the best blocking tight ends. Just takes him, gets his hands on it, wait, lets the ball get there, throws Francis off and makes the play. A gain of two and make it second and eight. Great couldn't hear. Came up for a listen. Now Montana outside quick Clark. That ball again was thrown long before Clark ever turned around. We you know Clark and Montana came out the first year, and they've been—they're not only you know teammates, but they're they're best friends. They're like brothers, and they know each other's every move. That is, uh, there's Jeff Stover over on the sideline. He was hurt coming in, and it looks like his ankle might be bothering him again. That is a great story about how the 49ers got Clark and how they got Montana. And we'll have time perhaps later on to tell it. Well, Bill Sims is even part of that. Yeah. First down, San Francisco. On 
Tanner takes the tip, goes deep. That was going to be picked off by somebody. Rice down in a hurry. Lateral to Elvis Patterson. Patterson still has it. Chased by Craig. Now by Cribs, and down he goes. Welch made the interception. Lateral. 16-yard return. The Giants go into 49er territory. Well, that was Carl Banks again, who was right on Montana, forcing him to throw. It looked like Montana thought that, that Rice was going one way. He just threw it out there in the middle. Rice is off to the right. Herb Welsh comes up with the interception, starts to run, laterals to Elvis Patterson. I don't think that was a forward lateral. And then Patterson runs it the rest of the way. And the Giants have it at the 49 45. They go with two tight ends again. This is Joe Morris. Morris is gone. said that they were going to get get Morris 100 yards. Bill Wall says we'll give him his 100. They're not going to beat us deep. But I don't think either of them thought it would be this much this soon. With seven and a half minutes to go in the first half, he's already got his 100. Craig was the man in motion. Montana down the middle. Rice put a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. A gain of 18. Elvis Patterson on the bottom of the pile for the Giants, but a penalty marker down. Looks like it's going to be holding, probably against the left tackle, Bubba Paris. Usually when that guy calls it, that's what it is, although it was illegal motion. Do it, they call it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's John illegal Frank, it's the uh, tight Number end. Number 86, offense, first down. The 49ers were also using a lot of two tight ends. Second tight end being John Frank, who moved on that play. And I remember who was lined up across from him, Lawrence Taylor. And it's amazing, as we've talked about before, how many times those guys cause penalties. Montana, trip, nothing. 
Burt was there first. I tell you, Jim Burt, the nose tackle, makes the play, but the big play to me was by Carl Banks. Here's Jim Burt here. Banks is out here. He's going to stuff it here, and Burt squeezes it from this end. But watch on the top of the screen. Banks come across, take on the offensive guard right there. And then that makes him cut back right into the nose tackle, Jim Burt. Watch 58 take on Guy McIntyre. Get right down there, shoulder to shoulder. Give him no lane and let Burt catch him from behind. Good help from reason. Here comes the blitz against Montana. He had to just throw it away. It was Pepper Johnson firing up the middle and no one picked him up. That's reminiscent of the first meeting between these two. Well, you know, there's the guy that Bill Parcell says is going to be playing more and more. He's only a rookie. He said he's kind of a combination between Reasons and Carson. He said he has more speed, good tackler, good inside type of guy, and he is now becoming their third pass rusher, Pepper Johnson. Adequate size as well. Third down, 16. Come again, flags are down, Montana for the green spot. No one close. It's going to be against the 49ers. They got them rattled right now. Well, they sure do because they're changing up their defenses. They're keeping the pressure on. Now watch here what they're doing. Instead of getting pressure from the outside, they're bringing, you see Banks and Pepper Johnson come inside. See, they want to get that rush right up the middle in Montana's face. See, because it doesn't do any good, the outside guys will never get there. The way to get to them is straight up the middle. That'll make it third and 21. Randy Cross moved. Burt jumped around him, but the penalty was against number 51. Burt moved when he saw those two linebackers up in there. It was time for concern. Outside Craig with a block across in front. Craig to about the 25. Ball flies out of there. Andy Hedden made the stop, but the 49ers will have to punt. Hey, one thing, they, these Giants are going after Joe Montana in this 49er passing game. They're not going to let him have any time. They aren't going to let him have any lane. And when he does complete it, they're going to go after him and gang tackle. Runniger back to punt. McConkey back deep for the Giants. Line drive kick. McConkey retreats. He'll have some room to operate. Conkey head over heels at about the giant 43 hit by again by Ratman. Look at McConkey celebrate. You need that on a team. That guy's the spirit of a team. Maybe not the greatest player, but the heart. 14-3. Five and a half minutes left first half. Sports will present it. Sims going for more. Has got a man. Incomplete. Stacy Robinson had two steps on Ronnie Lott, Tim McKayer. And that pass was there. And you know what Phil Sims is thinking? You set that thing up. You wait for it. It's first down. You're going for your big one. You get the coverage you want. You throw the ball out there just like you want it, and it's an incomplete pass. You know, sometimes you'll wait a whole half for the situation to get the right play. And then when it happens, you have to get it in the end zone. It was there. Bill Sims did his part. The line did their part. Second down 10. Roussan was the man in motion. Sims back to work again. Out of the pocket with room. Sims first down. Out of bounds at the 49er 43 by Ricky Ellison for a gain of 14. You know, Phil Sims does a lot more for this team than he gets credit for this year. For some reason, I don't know, he's an easy guy to jump on, but I think he's done an outstanding job. You know, the quarterbacks that are in the Pro Bowl this year, this guy has a 4-0 record against them. I mean, you think of Kramers from Minnesota, they beat them. 
I think of a, a Schrader right. beat them twice and then uh, beat Elway who's in there so his record against Pro Bowl quarterbacks is 4-0 and, and he'll be watching Horace Carthon nifty move one you really don't expect from him to the outside for a gain of eight stopped by Lott they, they like to get in behind their right tackle, Carl Nelson, and their tight end, Mark Bavaro, up on top of the screen. Watch him on Haley. Just dives out, gets right inside. See, gets his body between Haley and the ball carrier. Then when Carthon jumps outside, Bavaro turned and took him the other way. That was a double different. Take him out, take him straight, boom, take him in. Second and two. to a first down. Brad Benson came flying out of there. Over on the 49er bench. Bubba Paris closest to you. Gain of two by Carthon. It's going to be close to a first down. Close enough to bring him out and measure. You know that third guy in there is Roger Craig. I never saw a running back so excited the day before a game as Roger Craig. He's the fourth guy in. As Roger Craig was yesterday. I mean, he was out here at practice. He was bouncing all over the place, running, felt great, in the hotel, bouncing around the lobby, in the room. And uh, he just hasn't been able to get it unleashed yet in his first half, but he has that energy in there. 4.32 remaining first half. Giants leading 14-3, Jim Burt. And uh, his backup nose tackle, Eric Howard, next to him. They sort of uh, remain together most of the time. Uh, in fact, Bill Parcell said he was calling Eric Howard Burt's dog. He said he <laughs> follows him around like he's a puppy. Now it's Mo out on the move. It's Morris to the left. The same play that they broke for big yardage earlier. Jim Fonhorst this time stopped Morris after a gain of one. But that should be enough for a giant first down. You know, it's funny, I was talking about quarterbacks and passing, we talked about that earlier, that just can't be one-dimensional, but the running game is usually the thing that controls the game. The Giants have rushed for 148 yards, and the 49ers only 18 thus far. The last meeting, the regular season meeting, the rushing yards, 49ers had 84, and the Giants only two, and look how things have turned around today. That was at the half of that first game. You know, it's just really the opposite. Uh, you know, what happened, the, the 49ers surprised everyone by running so well against the Giants, and the Giants couldn't run against them. And then that's what the month, the two weeks of preparation, this is what they're coming up with. Morris is split wide to the right, just up at the top of the screen. Sims throws to Carton. After a gain of maybe one or two by Haley and Walter. I think I'd get the ball back to Morris or Roussan. They, you know, the, the Giants have not been a big fullback running team. The fullback is basically a blocker. And they probably run the fullback more in this first half than I can remember in any game. Well, Morris goes out now, and Roussan, number 22, just checked in. Second and 10. Clock running with 319 left to play in the first half. Giants leading 14-3. They better hurry up. They got up to they didn't break the huddle pad until there was five seconds left on the 30-second clock. I know that Phil Sims is saying it's my fault. He took too long in the huddle. When he broke, he looked up and there's no way he could have gotten the ball snapped before the time ran out on the 30-second clock. Don't forget, coming up at the half, Brent Musburger, back from Chicago, will be with Dick Vermeil. And the question is, what happened to the Bears? What did happen? They were there. I think what happened was a, a big dose of Washington Redskins intensity and, and play. Those guys, you know, you know, the other guy that, uh, you know, always, always plays well is that Jay Schrader. You know, I mean, he's the guy that they you say you could run, you can do this. And that guy goes back there, and he can he can uncork that ball deep on you. I think people don't realize how fast he is. 
as well as being big 6-4 Super Bowl champions the year after. You know, I think the big thing is they usually don't get back to the Super Bowl, but as you see, 15 of them had made the playoffs the next year. There's only been five that have missed the playoffs. But what happens to the Super Bowl team, it's not that you don't get back. It's not that you don't have a good year. It's just tough to get all the way to the end again. The year after your team and you won the Super Bowl championship, what happened? Well, we lost the championship game to the Denver Broncos, and that was the year the Broncos played the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. And you're still mad about that loss. Well, yeah, well, I'm mad about the <laughs> Rob Lytle fumble going in. And they gave it back to him. Said it wasn't a fumble. But it was a fumble. <laughs> I'm not mad. No, I know you're not mad. You haven't forgotten. How's that? Yeah, that's right. Motion, second down, reverse to Manuel. People in front of him, and down he goes. Dwayne Board. Manuel has had an injury, a leg injury. It looked like it might have buckled a little bit right there, but he seems okay. It looked like a reverse run by a guy who was rusty from a 12 weeks of inactivity. I mean, that's why I don't know where that one came from. I think, you know, they've been having success getting the ball up the field, going straight at him. I don't know that they need this stuff now. I mean, you know, I mean, boom, boom, get out on those blocks, get things happening. Here they're trying to run the reverse, and it looked like whether he stumbled or not, Dwayne Board was going to tackle him anyway. Third down, 49ers showing blitz on Sims. They don't get to him. He gets it out to Tony Galbraith. And he might get it close enough to attempt the field goal. Gain of 11, stopped by McKayer, but that might have gotten him down into range. Well, I would say that they are in range. You know, had they not lost on that reverse, it would have been enough for a first down. Mm -hmm. But because they lost on the reverse, they still have five yards to go. And they have two minutes remaining in the first half with the Giants leading the 49ers 14-3. Giant Stadium, Pat Summerall, John Madden, the Giants leading the 49ers, 14-3, two minutes remaining, first half. Giants got a touchdown, Paycombs, Allegra to try the field goal, it'll be about 45 yards, Giants got a touchdown from Bavaro from Sims, a 24-yard pass completion, and a 45-yard run by Joe Morris. This will be a 45-yard field goal attempt by Allegre with Jeff Rutledge holding. Got a fake here. Unusual. Allegre is split wide to the left. Pass comes back to Rutledge. Bavaro wide open. First down Giants at the 49er five. Homo knocked him down. And that one will make a head coach smile. Some play. They shifted their kicker out wide and hit their tight end. What you hear, Langridge, the kicker. Now he shifts out. Carthon shifts back. Bavaro is on the right of the screen. 49ers have no defensive backs in the game except Homo. By the time he figured out what happened, there was there was Bavaro. That is the type of play that will make a head coach smile. We tricked him. <laughs> now I wonder who's the genius. Morris around the corner, touchdown. What a penalty marker down. could be a big, big penalty. Holding, number 61, offense, first down. You know, they get that play on the fake, they get the first down, they score the touchdown, now you bring it back, and it's on the 15-yard line. If they don't get it in, that lack of score could be sitting up there all day. There's the holding right there. See 61, Godfrey, the left hand. And he didn't have to do it. Morris was already by him, right? 
Sims back to throw. Up the middle, almost picked off, juggled by Ronnie Lott. Intended for Bavaro, Lott almost came up with the interception. Hey, Ronnie Lott is kind of the, the veteran leader, kind of the soul of this 49er defense now. Remember the first year they went to the Super Bowl, he was a rookie cornerback. Now he's the veteran safety. Reading things like this, he sees Bavaro, gets a good jump. But you know what happened? He had, they, his hands were too close to his body, and the, the ball just hit his shoulder pad. And bounced away. Second down. Giants at the 49 or 15. Sims back again with time. In the end zone, McConkey in through his hand. He had a spin around. Sims now blaming himself for that one. is running a, a corner pattern, goes to the end, then he goes back outside. I don't know that that ball wasn't there. I don't know that he couldn't have caught that. I don't know if Sims is upset of McConkie or upset of himself. I think himself. Or maybe neither. Maybe he's just upset that he didn't get the touchdown. Giants take a timeout. They have only one now remaining. They lead 14-3, clock with 55 seconds remaining first half. You know, the big thing on that play had to be that holding penalty against Chris Godfrey that called the touchdown back. Because Joe Morris, again, did score on that play. It was set up by the fake field goal. So if you have the fake and it works, it's what you get out of it. You have the fake, it works, and you don't get any points. Then it was all for nada. Have you ever seen that play, that fake field goal before, where they split the kicker out wide to the left? Yeah, I have seen that before. Uh, not with the Giants. The Giants, of course, having Jeff Rutledge have done a number of things. You know, we've seen An option. with the option and those types of things. But I've seen someone else where they have split the kicker out and thrown the ball. That, of course, is the advantage you always have when you have a guy like Jeff Rutledge, who is a backup quarterback, but also has the ability to run. And run that option we talked about. That In that case, he just dropped back in the sprint formation and threw the pass to Bavaro. Sims back in. The Giants down to one timeout. 55 seconds remaining. Third down and 15 at the 15. Sims with people in his face. Touchdown to Bobby Johnson. Craig again back deep for San Francisco. Allegra's kick. 
deeper this time, but Craig will take it at the two. Cripps, I'm sorry. Cripps gets out to about the 27. Finally knocked down by Mark Collins. Return of 25 yards. 43 seconds left to play in the first half. The Giants 21, the 49ers 3. Two touchdown passes. You know, it seemed like the, the Giants had the ball for about a half hour. <laughs> it seems like about a half hour since they got it in. There it is. It was only four minutes and 45 seconds. But with all that other stuff in there, it, uh, Joe Montana may have to warm up again. Montana, no place to go outside Rice. Rice out of bounds. Stops the clock. Elvis Patterson. Flag down, however. Lawrence Taylor indicating it is against the 49ers. And it is. That signal is for illegal man downfield. Ineligible receiver downfield on the forward pass. Number 51, offense. First down. Number 51 is a right guard, and that would be Randy Cross right here. Now what happens is, is sometimes they fire out. I don't know why he would go downfield. There he goes, though. I don't know where he was going. It wasn't a screen. He just wanted to find another blue jersey. First and 20. Montana back to throw. Going deep. It's going to be picked off by Lawrence Taylor. And he's got a lot of room to run. Montana is down. Taylor is in the end zone. But Montana is hurt. Concerned. Montana was telling us yesterday that in uh, the period of rehabilitation after his back surgery that he injured that left shoulder and he thought it was separated. He was saying when he first came back from the back injury, he said he didn't want to tell anyone about the shoulder, but the thing that he worried about injured more than the back was the shoulder. And it looks like that's what it could be on this play. I'll tell you, Burt really lifted him out of the ground. Nothing dirty, nothing unnecessary. Legitimate by Burt. You know, he looks like he's losing, Pat. That looked, maybe, maybe it wasn't the shoulder. Maybe he was just, or maybe he was knocked out. That's what it looks like. I'll tell you, he is awfully wobbly. Headed for the 49er locker room. The touchdown is official by Lawrence Taylor from 34 yards away. Here's the extra point attempt by Allegre. And it's good. And it's 28-3. Giants. He is wobbling. Montana headed for the San Francisco locker room. Look. Yeah, here's the whole play again. We'll see the 
the rush. We'll see Jim Burt coming right up the middle. We'll see Montana getting rid of it, throwing the ball out there. As he got hit, that took a little off. So it was short out there to right. Lawrence Taylor getting back in his zone, seeing that ball, of course, when he catches it, it's in the end zone. There's no 49er between he and the touchdown. It was intended for Rice, but he had no chance. Lawrence Taylor downed by his own teammates. And then a bunch of them jumped on him after they got him down. 28 to 3 with 28 seconds left to play in the first half. The Giants lead. Allegra bounces the kick down in the direction of Roger Craig. He can't pick it up. Falls on it and says that's enough. Turnovers. Turnovers. Well, you know, the big thing is, is not only that you get turnovers, but what you do with them. Look at the Giants. They've got a fumble and two interceptions, and they've turned those turnovers into 18 points. You know, that's a big thing. One, go out and get them. Make them turn the ball over, but then when you get the ball after a turnover, boom, you got to get it in there and score. You got to knock them out. And that's what the Giants are doing in this first half. 28-3, they lead. Jeff Kemp is now the 49er quarterback. He goes back to throw. Flag down. Kemp just trots around. You know, one thing, we have Jeff Kemp in here now. You see that he's thrown 11 touchdown nice. passes. Number 77, offense, first down. Kemp can throw the ball deep. As a matter of fact, it's interesting. When you look at Jerry Rice's statistics, Jerry Rice did better when Jeff Kemp was in there than Joe Montana. More yards. Well, more yards and more touchdowns. 25 seconds left, first and 15, the ball back at the 49er 10. Kip back to try to throw. Upfield. Derek Crawford was the intended receiver. Kemp had the ball there. Yeah, Crawford sure looked funny on that play. I mean, he was going up there like either he didn't expect the ball, he didn't see it, or he was looking at the defender. Bunch of him gets by Harry Carson. And he looked up, and I don't know if he was... I think he was looking up to see who that guy in the blue jersey was. Looking up to see where the traffic might come from. You can't do that. You're going to get it anyway, and that's why they pay you, and that's why you're supposed to be a professional. Second and 15, 49ers back at their own 10. Jeff Kemp replaces Joe Montana. Clock runs. Now they stop it. Kemp intended for Rice or in that direction. Gary Reasons in the area, and another look. I'll tell you one thing. I think I think this giant defense really has this 49er offense out of sync. And it may be, I'm not a big one that believes in intimidation, but there could be a little intimidation, this giant defense, because they've been doing the job. They've been putting the pressure on them, on the 49ers. They've been tackling. They've had guys all over the field. They've gone out there in this first half and have made things happen. Here's Kemp back to throw again. Up the middle. Marjoram. Incomplete. Will McDonough, by the way, is outside the 49er locker room right now waiting for some information, and hopefully at the half he'll have a report on the condition of Joe Montana, who was just taken in after the hit by Jim Burt. Kemp comes out. The 49er punting unit goes in. Max Lenniger's number four. McConkey back deep for the Giants. They lead it 28 to 3 with six seconds left in the first half. I'm sure that the Redskins and Coach Joe Gibbs are watching this game down in Washington. I wonder if they'll start working on the Giants here at halftime. Probably so. Runniger's kick is another good one. McConkey retreats to his own 42. First half. first half with the score the Giants 28 the 49ers 3 
Night Champions, the New York Giants have opened up a commanding 28-3 lead. I'm Brent Musburger along with Dick Vermeil. Dick, that was not a cheap shot that Jim Bird took at Joe Montana. That was good, tough football. No, good, tough football by one of the best nose guards in football. Well, this is how it unfolded because it certainly turned things around. Burt was getting the heat on Montana. Meanwhile, Lawrence Taylor had dropped back into his zone. He picked it off, ran it in for an end zone. But the key question now, especially for 49er fans, what about Joe Montana? Let's go to Will McDonough, who's standing by with the San Francisco 49er general manager, John McVay. Brent, thanks very much. John, you went in the dressing room. You talked to your people. What is the condition of Joe Montana? Well, the doctors are examining right now, Will. And, uh, of course, I think it, it looks like he you know, got a concussion. Uh, we won't know until the doctor finishes the examination, but Dr. Clint uh, is looking at him right now. Do you think he'll play the second half? If you had to take a guess at it. I think he probably will. He's a pretty tough guy. Uh, of course, we've got Jeff Kemp in there, and Jeff has played well for us every time he's had the opportunity. But uh, I think, uh, I think Joe, you might see him back in there. Uh, earlier in the half, John Madden mentioned they talked with Joe, and there's some possibility he might have earlier had a separated shoulder. you know anything about that? Well, he's had a lot of injuries, though, you know, in his career, and he's, he's had some shoulder injuries, and, of course, the most recent one was a well-publicized back operation, but uh, he's fine. Uh, you know, his, his shoulders are fine. Knowing your game plan, what do you have to do to get back in this game? Well, I think we have to control the ball, and we've got to keep it away from them. Uh, they're, they're throwing the ball a lot on first down. Uh, I think, you know, we've got to shut them down. Uh, we've got to shut Morris down. He's running well. Uh, but our coaches are uh, working with our guys right now and get some adjustments made. John, thanks very much. Back to you, Brent. All right, Will, thank you. And you know, Dick Vermeil, while we were enjoying the first half here, Mike Ditka was meeting the press back in Chicago on this Sunday afternoon. The Super Bowl champions were knocked out yesterday by the Washington Redskins. The news conference covered a variety of subjects, including the future of quarterback Jim McMahon. Oh, we sat with Jim, and I think right now what Jim Mike, what Jim's got to do is just got to do what he said he's going to do and, and go back to work and try to get healthy and, and healed and, and rehabilitated and, and everything else that's important to him. I, I don't know that, you know, that he's unhappy with the organization. You say he expressed displeasure, then he tells me he's not unhappy. So, you know, I don't know that he's unhappy with anything. I don't, the last meeting we had, he was not unhappy with the Bears at all. But, you know, I don't know. And by answer your question, no, William Perry did not play his last game as a Bear. Mike. I really want to do some things with the quarterbacks, especially with, uh, uh, Doug and Mike and uh, you know and I want to set up a, a, a regiment through Greg Landry and I want to get them into a situation where they work on the same things every day of reading dropping planting their feet and throwing uh, I'm not discounting Steve at all and I'm not discounting Jim I just think if, if they want to get in and do the same things fine they, they're more than welcome but the, it will be a, it'll will be two things that we will do these are the things that we will do with Mike and Doug for sure Strong egos in Chicago, and Dick Vermeil, I had the feeling for the last month that Mike Ditka was trying to prove something to Jim McMahon, and that's why he was forcing Doug Flutie into a starting role. That was only his second start yesterday, and suddenly he's in the playoffs. Well, I don't know if he was forcing him into it. When a coach has a feeling about a player, and we all have those feelings, that this is my guy, you develop a tremendous confidence in him, and... To develop him, he's got to know you have that feeling, and, and Ditka has that feeling in him. Yeah, but Dick Fuller had beaten Washington in RFK Stadium. Wouldn't you have a coach looked back at that and said, maybe that's the man I want to get ready? Well, he made the decision when he started him against Dallas in, in the last game, right. I think, and that carried over into coming into the league game. I think it's tough for any backup quarterback, regardless of Fuller or Flutie, to win a playoff game. Well, I don't want to take anything away from the Washington Redskins, but the Bears did self-destruct. However, Irv Cross, you were in Washington all week. Joe Gibbs was laying down that smoke screen. We'll be lucky to show up. We're beaten up. We can't win. What was the mood with the Redskin players? How did you find it? Well, Brent, uh, Joe Gibbs was telling that story true enough, but the Redskin players were really very confident and felt they had a great chance of beating Chicago. And you know, of course, they went in and did it. And I think there are a lot of reasons for it. First of all, the week before when they played the Rams, they had a similar game plan against the Rams they had going against Chicago. A, they had to stop Eric Dickerson, the league's premier running back, and force a young rookie quarterback to throw the ball. And they felt that if they could get Everett in a position where he had to throw, they could win. They had precisely the same kind of a game plan going into Chicago. Stop Walter Payton, shut down the running ga game, forced Flutie to throw, and they felt every time Flutie put the ball in the air, they had a pretty good chance of coming down with it, so they're very confident. A couple other factors, too, Brent, that were very important. They were beat up, banged up football team. There's no question about that. They were hurt. 
But the fact that Russ Grimm played that entire game with bruised ribs and Joe Jacoby played the game with that broken right hand was a great inspirational lift to that football team. Just one more thought about today's game. I came down the tunnel with Joe Montana when he went in the locker room. His eyes were glazed, and the giant players, they walked in just a second ago, were dead fine. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Brent? All right, Irv, one final note on the Redskins. When I was inside their locker room prior to yesterday's game, I've never seen a looser bunch of athletes. John Madden alluded to Jay Schrader. He's a great athlete. He's only one victory away from a Super Bowl. The NFL on CBS continues with the playoffs next week. Right now, matters to be cleared up at Giants Stadium as the Giants lead the 49ers as we begin the start of the third quarter, 28-3. Next week, the NFC Championship game here on CBS. And, of course, after that, the Super Bowl. Allegre's kick bounces over the head of Cribs, and he goes back to down it, and the 49ers will stop and start from their own 20-yard line. Rushing yards in the first half. The Giants led by Joe Morris, 144 to 18. The 49ers, three turnovers. Turnover points, 21 to nothing. And over and over, we say the same thing. That'll do it to you. Well, yeah, if you could go in a game, and, you know, is, is you say, I want to be able to run the ball well and not have any turnovers. That's a pretty good game plan. You'd be in the Super Bowl just about every year. Jeff Kemp, that quarterback for San Francisco. Montana has not come out of the 49er locker room as yet. Roger Craig, left side. Out of bounds after a pickup of about six by Harry Carson. You know, I think what the 49ers will want to do here, Pat, and what Bill Walsh is probably telling his team, we haven't scored a touchdown yet. Let's go out and start. Let's start the same way we started the first half. Work on that first score. You know, if you start to look, we're down 28 to 3. What are we going to do? You don't look at 25 points. You look at getting the first score. Second and four. White Clark split out wide to the right, Rice to the left. Jeff Kemp, the quarterback. Russ Francis in motion. Straight ahead to Crip. Not enough for a first down. Banks tripped him up. A gain of two, it'll be third and two. You know, I think Carl Banks is probably the best guy. Watch watch Banks here. I think he's probably the MVP. Watch how he comes in here, gets penetration, takes on the block, and gives the ball carrier nowhere to cut. Watch 58. The ball snaps. See, he gets a penetration, gets in there low on Craig, knocks him back, and doesn't let Cribs even get to the line of scrimmage. Third down, and they need about three. Showing blitz, and here they come again. Pass from Kemp to Rice, complete. Enough for a first down, and penalty markers down. Look at Dwight Clark trying to tackle Jim Burke. I think it's going to be against Elvis Patterson against Rice. I think it is, too. He was, he was tight man-to-man -man coverage, following him all the way in. White Clark needs an overhaul. Well, he got to get some, some stuff back underneath some stuff. <laughs> White Clark was saying that he had a sore throat yesterday, and the doctor started to scramble. Pass interference, number 34, defense, automatic first down. Thinking he had the flow, but all he did, he had a sore throat from singing. There he goes right there. You saw Patterson there. I guess it was that left hand in there. To me, that's pretty good coverage. I think that's a good tight coverage. I would that's accept there. that. Bump him around. Automatic first down. 28 to 3. Giants lead. They show blitz again, and now they back out. Jeff Kemp outside of Rice. Dodges one giant. Hops out of bounds. Herb Welch. Should be enough for another San Francisco first down. Montana still in the locker room. The word we got was possible concussion. He might be back, but he still hasn't returned. Now the 49ers are off to a good start here with Jeff Kemp at quarterback in the second half. But remember the first half, they started the same way. Hit Jerry Rice with a big post pattern. He's running free to the end zone. He just fumbles the ball. And it was kind of downhill after that for the Niners. Rice comes wide to the right this time. Craig and Cribb 
Behind Kemp. That's Craig in motion. Kemp outside quickly to Craig. And up in a hurry is Carl Banks. I'll tell you, today in this game, Carl Banks is the best player in the field. I mean, he's been, we've seen him blitz. We've seen him come in and stop the run. Now we see him run out and co cover Roger Craig and make an open field tackle for no gain. Watch him here. Craig is going to come to the outside. He was in motion. Boom, here comes 58 right down the line. Makes that tackle, and Craig doesn't take Ooh. another step forward. He just throws him around like a rag doll. A loss of one. To make it second and 11. Kip looking in the direction of Rice. Throws down the middle for no one. Russ Francis might have been the closest 49er. But Kemp was under pressure from Lawrence Taylor. You know, I've been talk all week about how the 49ers are going to take advantage of Herb Wealth, who's starting there at the weak safety position. Of course, if you get pressure like that, you're not going to be able to get deep to the weak safety anyway. You and I could play safety. <laughs> well, no. Uh -uh. Reasons is out, and Pepper Johnson is the giant linebacker, number 52. Third down, 11. Pepper Johnson standing up in the middle. Craig away from Welch for a moment, but not enough for a first down as Welch takes down Roger Craig after a gain of seven. The 49ers will have to punt. You can just feel Herb Welch's determination here to make that tackle. That's the thing that the giant coaches have been talking to that secondary about. They've challenged them on that. you got to be able to do that. And you can just feel Herb Wells taking that as he was chasing Roger Craig. Taking the place of the injured Terry Kennard and doing a fine job. Runniger. The punt for the 49ers. McConkie standing at his own team. McConkie, no fair catch at the 18. About the 24 before he stopped by Randy Cross. 28 to 3. The Giants over San Francisco with 12-22 left third quarter. NFL today. The NFC Championship game then follows. The Redskins are in against either these Giants or these 49ers. If it's the 49ers, they'll be at Candlestick. If it's the Giants, we'll be back here. You know, it'd be interesting now. It looks like it's going to be the Giants. And if, if it is the Giants, That'll be the third, third time, time that they've met this season. The Giants beat them here on a Monday night game. Remember, in fact, it was the, it was the, oh yeah, now there's, there's quite an idea. We put that sheet around both <laughs> of us. <laughs> we could wear that, wear that sheet. Why would they want you for vice? I don't know, just the kind of the second guy, the bottom guy, the guy that kind of catches everything that falls through the cracks. <laughs> okay. at the 25. Sims, Morris. Only a couple. Ronnie Lott and Charles Haley to make the stop. You know, Charles Haley, we talked about him being from big James Madison. Remember a couple weeks ago we were in Washington and we yep. had that waiter at the restaurant and he said, he said every time anyone says James Madison, they always say little. It's a, you know, like little James Madison College. He said, we got over 10,000 guys there, 10,000 students. He said, you guys referred yeah, to Yeah, you it. guys. I never said little. Big James Madison. <laughs> oh, it's big. Second and eight. Sims. Outside the 30, about the 32, a gain of five. It'll bring up a third down. And again, Charles Haley and Ronnie Lott. Make the stop. So of course, Charles Haley's from Big James Madison, and the other guy from Big James Madison is Gary Clark, the Washington Redskins, a wide receiver. That's two pretty good NFL players. I would say. Gary Clark is a Pro Bowl type player, and Haley is going to be one. They say he's a lot like Fred Dean. You know, that that could have be the big, strong defensive lineman. It has good leverage and great speed and quickness. Same kind of function. Here is Sims. Lamar. Lamar has a first down. You know, we said this before about him, John, but a lot of backs have to sort of glide before they make the cut. He can make that cut at top speed. 
You know, and, they, and the thing about that is having strong lower legs, strong calves and strong ankles can make you make that cut at full speed. And that's what he does. He doesn't have to get turned. He reads things so well. Gets it turned upfield and turns it up for a first down. Something uh, Ronnie Lott discussing something with the officials. Obviously had something to do with the clock and when to start it. And the 30 second clock now starts up again. is the deep back. Maurice Carthon in front of him. And it's back to Joe Morris. Morris around the corner, out of bounds. A gain of six. Giants Stadium, East Rutherford, where the Giants lead the 49ers in the NFC Divisional Playoff 28-3. 49ers committed three turnovers. The Giants turned all three of them into touchdown. Joe Morris has 127 yards rushing. Joe Montana is still in the 49er locker room with a concussion. And Phil Sims again quietly has had another good day. Flag. Carter. Michael Carter jumped off sides again. That one was legitimate. Number 95. Defense. Down. That's why he's so upset. I mean, it, you know, the nose tackle, they're always taught, you know, watch the ball, watch the ball move. But it can be the inflection of the quarterback's voice. Sometimes the center just puts a little more pressure on the ball with his hands, just squeezes any little thing. Those guys are up there so tight, so jumpy, that they'll jump on any little movement. Paint to paint. First and ten Giants. That's manual in motion. Jamari's Carta. Man wide open downfield. This is Rusan. Tina Turner knocked him out of bounds. Stacy Robinson had broken clean deep. Sims went to Rusan underneath. You know, I think that Rusan is going to be like the pass receiving halfback of this giant team. You know, they have Carthon is a running fullback. Tony Galbraith had been the pass receiving fullback. Joe Morris is now the running halfback and I think Roussan is going to become the pass receiving halfback. Morris behind Carthon. Barrels down to about the 20 behind Maurice Carthon blocking. Tim McHire made the stop. I like that Maurice Carthon. I, I think, you know, we talked about the things it's not a glamour thing when you have to lead all the time and get those blocks but when he comes firing around that corner leading Morris he looks like he's uh, you know, he's always square he's always bent he's always going to make that that block that knocks that guy out and clears the lane second and two McConkey split wide to the left 49 showing blitz they get to Morris Picked up six, got it up for a first down. Let's see about the penalty. Morris is thinking if the field were 55 yards wide, he has a touchdown. He needed just another yard or so. He was trying to make that cut, and he would have gotten it in the end zone. Illegal block, number 89, offense, still second down. Well, that's against Mark Bavaro. Let's see what he does there. Has his hand. I don't think it's illegal so far. Looks pretty legal, legal, legal. Got an arm caught in there, a little push. I don't know. That looked legal to me. See, but if Joe Morris had another yard or so, he would have scored. Whip, yard of whip. Second down and nine. The line of scrimmage, the 49er, 28. The Giants lead at 28-3. Roussan has replaced Morris. Sims looking in his direction. McConkey touchdown. Thirty-four, three. 
sends to McConkey from 28 yards away. Allegri for the extra point. Rutledge holding to make it 35-3 with 8.56 left in the third quarter. The pressure that Bill Sims had, Pat, on that on that last pass. Ricky Elephant, watch him, number 50. He's going to come straight up the middle there. Sims, I don't think again. He may have seen McConkey, but he didn't see him when he threw that ball. That's the second touchdown pass he's thrown to that right side when he's had a guy hanging on him just as he threw the ball. I wonder how he got the velocity on it to get it up over the corner and into McConkey's arm. Boy, you're so right. What a heck of a throw. Bring on the Redskins. It looks like they'll be here next week. Yeah, with that extra day now. You know, they did it. What they did to the Bears yesterday was six days rest. Now they get that extra day. They'll really be fired up next week. The Redskins were saying that they're the kind of team that doesn't do well with a lot of time off. They like to just keep it going each week. Looks like they'll have their chance. Griggs and Craig. Craig in front of Chris. To the 25. Hit down by Andy Hedden. Pepper Johnson also there on the tackle, along with Robbie Jones. There's the obligatory victory bucket. There's two of them. I mean, it's, it's like, you just call them like over obligatory victory bucket. And then the other one's Junior, over Junior. <laughs> See, now, no one looks at I mean, no one cares now. I mean, they just ignore him the whole game. At the end of the game, boom, they're going to be right there. They're going to pour them on Parcell. Yep, every, they even have a backup. Just like the big, you always have to have a starter and a backup. Yeah, you know, Bucket has a backup. Here's Jeff Kemp. Nothing doing. He's hit by Leonard Marshall just as he lets it go. And he had to let it go. Kemp doesn't have anything to throw to. He's looking, looking right all the way. And Marshall hits him. He just had to get rid of that ball. Taylor on the outside, cut down. Marshall on the inside, not cut down. Jeff Kemp just had to fire. Second and ten. There that was a game plan for the 49ers. Get that rush up the middle. Intercepted by Mark Collins. Intended for Clark. Joe Montana hit by Jim Burt in the closing seconds of the first half. Suffering from a concussion. Still in the locker room. Giant defense has been rough on quarterbacks this year. Well, you know, two of those, they, they put Tommy Kramer out earlier. Then on successive Sundays, remember, we did the game Danny White. That was a hand, and he was out for the season. Jaworski the next week was a hand, and he was out for the season. And now Montana. Crowd chanting defense, and they are really fired up. The crowd and the defense. Incomplete to Rice. Behind him by just a bit. And the 49ers again will have to punch. For the defense. The ovation. It's a standing ovation, Pat. I'll tell you, these, these giant fans have waited a long time for a championship game here, and they've also learned to enjoy and appreciate this defense. Deservedly so. Runniger's kick to McCarthy at the 35. Away from one man. Hit hard and knocked backwards by Bill Ring. Number 30, 40-yard punt by Runniger. 8.24 left third quarter. The Giants 35, the 49ers 3. That's overall John Madden. We're at Giants Stadium. And that 
is a correct score. 8.24 left third quarter. The Giants lead the 49ers 35-3. They have the ball at their own 47-yard line. Bill Sims with Maurice Carthon and Joe Morris behind him. Morris. Skips and cut down maybe back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of perhaps a yard. You know, Pat, once we were talking about Joe Morris earlier in the season, I was talking about physics. But Joe Morris is not a little guy. I mean, Joe Morris is a big guy. He's just short. But, I mean, he has big, powerful arms, shoulders, legs, and the whole thing. And, I, you know, physics, I thought if you take your power, you weigh around 200 pounds, and you keep it short, that that would be stronger than someone who was the same weight, taller. So anyway, I, I got a lot of letters on that. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Sims down by Haley. First sack on Sims all day. Well, what it is, it's mass times velocity equals power. Is that a record? Well, Morris has a record for it. I mean, the mass and the velocity under, you know, that like 5'6". So he has his 190-some pounds. You see that package there in about 5'6". So that power is shortened down. So you get more power spread over less area. And then that's called the mass. Then when he runs, that's called the velocity that equals the power. Third and 20, Sims firing deep. McConkey intended. with Bobby Johnson, nothing there. Good coverage by the 49ers. 35-3, and the Giants send on Landetta. McKayer and Nixon were back with the two deep men. Here is Sean Landetta. He had a great year this year. In fact, it's a Pro Bowl year. And as a reward, he gets a new helmet next year. <laughs> one that fits, not, a, not, not that tight, short one. Not related to physics. But there's something in physics, too, the size of the head uh, squeezed into the helmet. The Niners put the rush on Landetta. They didn't touch it. He got it away, and the Giants will down it at about the 25. Six minutes and 56 seconds now left to play in the third quarter with the Giants dominating the 49ers. They lead 35-3. to three. The Championship game next week. And the winner will go to the Super Bowl. The NFC Championship Duel next Sunday on CBS Sports. Not a very happy 49er bench at the moment. They've been dominated this afternoon by the Giants. Jeff Kemp now at quarterback still. And back to throw. Outside of Francis. And out of bounds, Carl Banks, the leader there first, a gain of only four. We, we, we don't have a most valuable player, I don't think, do we, where you, you know, say at the end of the day, this no. is so-and-so's most valuable player. But if we did, I think this guy has to be the most valuable player, Carl Banks. I mean, he has been, he has been all over the field. I mean, and he's been back and open field tackles and rushing and blitzing and stopping to run. He's been on this left side. He's a one-man gang over here. And it's been a tremendous year for him as well. The other guy has more recognition, perhaps, but he's really played well. I think he's going to be the next ball pro on this team. Nothing there for Joe Cribbs. The first man to tackle him was Harry Carson. Well, you know, just like that play again, I don't mean to talk about Carl Banks every play, but Banks comes across, and he takes out the interference. Watch him come across here and take out the guard pulling. He takes him down, knocks him down, causes a pile. Now there's no place for Cribs to go. Third down. They need seven for a first. Got to throw again. Cribs on the move. Kemp quickly. Clark drops. Had it, juggled it, lost it. Mark Collins on the coverage. And again, the ovation.
position for the Giants defense. Twenty-one left third quarter. Runniger on again to punt. McConkey back at his own 34. To his 44. To just about midfield. 30 yard punt only by Runniger. Five yard return. Mike Walter made the stop. 5-12 left third quarter. The Giants 35, San Francisco 49ers 3. Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands across the Hudson from Manhattan. Giants with the ball, first to 10 at their own 49. Morris and Maurice Carthorn, the running backs. It's Joe Morris. And Joe Morris blasts for a first down left side. Carlton Williamson picked him up. Morris stays down. The latest word on Joe Montana. If you recall, if you were with us earlier, he was hit by Jim Bird in the closing seconds of the first half. Suffered a concussion. Was very woozy. Steadily improving, we hear, from the 49er locker room. But uh, Joe Montana will not be back. Was hit by Jim Bird. Got up slowly after that last carry, but seems okay now. Roussan has replaced him. Roussan with the ball. Inside the 49er 35, stopped by Dwayne Board. A gain of four. Let's watch Dwayne Board down there. This is what it looks like when you're in there, you're man to man against the tackle. You're watching his move first, so you move. Push him down, so he just knocked Benson down, and then just came in and made the tackle on Rasan. Dwayne Board is one of the, the solid players in this league. One of the guys who plays the run very, very well, and is a pretty good pass rusher. Second and five, as again, you look at Dwayne Board. And off Rasan steps out of one tackler. Got away for one more before Jim Farnhorst brings him down with help from Carlton Williamson. A gain of only one. Total offense today, the Giants 316 yards, 35 points. The 49ers 142 yards and three points. And I still think it's the story of the defense. I mean, I think Phil Sims had a big day. Joe Morris had a big day. But the defense set up and gave them a lot of those situations. Morris back in the game. Flags are down. Morris cuts back. He's got a first down. Ronnie Lott on the bottom of the pile. A gain of four. Put a flag down on the play. Did you hear what happened then as Sims was given his starting count, his cadence? I think that's what's bringing the 49ers offside. I mean, he was giving them that. You can go, hut, 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 hut. And, and boom, they all started to jump. So it was on his cadence more than any movement. Just over three minutes left to play third quarter. Redskins and the Giants, it would appear, next week right here. As John Madden said earlier, that would be the third time they've met this year. They play, of course, twice during the regular season every year. Offside, number 72, defense, first down. First down, Giants, Stover jump. And that familiarity, I think, when you play a team that many times, I don't know what it does to the game. It's, it's difficult, I know, to dominate in a series like that, particularly when they're close, like the Giants and the Redskins. Well, it tends to make you more conservative. You know, you don't add more because you remember things that didn't work and you know why they won't work so you don't put them in. Maurice Carthon over the left side stopped by board again. I've always felt it's easier to be wide open against someone you don't play or you don't know. When you know someone as well as the Giants and the Redskins 
it tends to be a more conservative game on one hand. And then on the other hand, I can tell you what it's going to be. It's going to be a very, very physical game. What effect do you think the fact that the Redskins played, you talked about this earlier, played yesterday, have an extra day to rest? I don't know. Those guys are amazing. I mean, those guys being able, they went into the Rams game beat up. They came out beat up, and being able to play like they did yesterday is just something to me. Morris is in motion. Zeke Moa, touchdown. From 29 yards out this time, Sims to Moa. Marcel said to Zeke Moat back this year, he never felt he was really all right until this week. He said, you may see some big plays from Zeke Moat because until now, I never felt he was really back. All year he's been there, and he's been coming back. He said, but now, this week, this game, I think he's back. Sims just throws it out. Moat's able to stretch out and get the ball for the touchdown. That particular pass pattern has been to the Giants throughout this year where they split those scenes in the zone. Now like Ray hits the extra point and it's 42 to 3. With a minute 58 left third quarter. Let's see if we can see the seams in the zone, Pat. Here's Moad here. He's just going to come straight down here. Now let's watch the zone and let's watch the play develop. See the motion starts out here. That spreads it. Now we can stop it here. We can stop here. We can see that here's the zoner, here's the zoner, here's the zoner. Between these guys are the scene. So that's why we're trying to get Moat in this scene. And you see they do get him in the scene. If the corner comes over too far, he hits the outside guy. Corner stays out, then he can hit his tight end. That was that two tight end setup again as Bavaro was in the right hand seam. Moat in the left. Five plays, 51 yards. Sims hits again. That's the old splitting the seam of the zone defense trick. Allegra's kick. Returned by Joe Chris. Cut down from behind by Byron Hunt and Lee Roussan. record for Phil Sims the four touchdowns nine out of 19 not all that good but the four TDs Sims on the phone McConkey asking the crowd hey this guy deserves more than you've given him that's the kind of guy Phil McConkey is I mean, he's the kind of guy who realizes it knows it and wants everyone else to know it Cribs by Banks again. A loss of six. I'll tell you, they're going to go back. The 49ers are. They're going to go back and they're going to say, hey, this guy right here, we never could get him, so we never could get around there. Every time we'd start out there, he'd run up, he'd do this, and we'd lose five yards. How are you supposed to run the ball on that guy they call Banks? The guy who plays like uh, Lawrence Taylor, but's got a different number. Cribs has carried eight times and gains no yards. Kemp back to throw, hit in the back by Lawrence Taylor and Leonard Marshall, just as he got rid of it. This is when it's fun if you're a defensive player. When you got him down, when your crowd's doing this, they, you know they have to pass, and you can come from the backside, and you can rush it. It's no fun when you're on the other side. Just watch. Here comes Taylor and Marshall from the backside. Those guys are always a nightmare to a right-handed quarterback. This is when it's fun to be dressed in blue. One minute left, third quarter, third and 16. Off by Pepper Johnson. Johnson inside the 15. Pepper Johnson down to the five. Kemp finally tripped 
him up. That's a step I haven't seen before. I like that one because you got both the right and the left in there. It's not one-handed. He gave both sides of the body equal time. That's the way you should do it. I know there's someone saying that probably Jesus. Don't use all your points this week. Save some for next week. That's not the way you play football. Pepper's going to keep that ball. And he's going to keep the celebration going. The thing about Pepper, he doesn't stop celebrating quickly. First and goal, Morris down inside the five, knocked out of bounds by Ricky Ellison. There for Johnson. They keep that for me. I may have to play some more. Well, no, he just said hold it for a while while I keep celebrating. Look, they're doing some more. Look. I mean, this thing could go on for hours. celebration I've ever seen and it was all over this play watch 52 Pepper Johnson that play got a block there from Collins right there that move that somersault got all the rest still being congratulated now that's a record that's a record that's an NFL record for celebration And off Mark. Touchdown Mark. Sixteen seconds left in the third quarter, and it's the Giants 48, the 49ers 3. Two yards out for Joe Morris. Interception by Pepper Johnson. Rutledge will hold again for Allegra. Allegra is seven for seven. of the year has chosen last week Bill Parcell I think right now Bill Parcells is starting to think about next week he has this one won and he's probably going to start making some substitutions I think I would I don't think I'd have Phil Sims in there anymore I don't think I'd play Morris anymore would certainly appear. We'll be right back here next week for the NFC Championship game between the Redskins and the Giants. Lawrence Taylor, he scored a touchdown. The MVP in the NFC. And remember the big day that he had against the Skins the last time they played at RFK. Joe Jacoby had a heck of a time trying to get him blocked. He caused Jay Schrader a lot of problems rushing from that backside. Allegra's kickoff is handled by Roger Craig at the nine. By McCarthy and some more special teamers. Robbie Jones and Pepper Johnson again. The home field, this Giants stadium, has been kind to the Giants this year. Look at what the home field advantage has done in the last six years. Well, you know, those, those were all the NFC teams, and every team since 1981 that had the home field went to the Super Bowl. They'll have it next week. Here's Joe Cribbs. A loss, perhaps, of the yard. Stopped by Leonard Marshall. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants, 49. 49ers three and we now pause for a word from your local station
ready to start quarter number four. The Giants leading 49 to three. NFC Divisional Playoff. And the 49ers, Jerry Rice on a reverse penalty marker down. And they'll stop it before it really gets underway. There's Lawrence Taylor. You know, remember when he first came in, he was a rookie in his first second year. He was always so lively and Number so vibrant. And offense, second down. In practice and everything. And he's saying now that you know, you know, he's getting a little older and he has to kind of pick his spots for his energy. <laughs> so he doesn't do that anymore in practice. He says he tries to save it for the game. He says he's getting old. He lives wild. Yeah. He plays wild. And, said when you do that you age a little quicker than some of the others i forgot <laughs> second down and 16. here's kemp back to throw does throw to clark white clark carries a lot of folks out to midfield mark collins a gain of 30 kemp to clark This is one thing the 49ers have been doing all day, running that slant pass where the where the receiver comes up about six or seven yards and then slants to the inside. They had some big plays. The first play that Rice had when he fumbled was a slant. And he had another one, and that was a slant that Dwight Clark just caught. You wonder how the complexion of this game would have changed if Rice hadn't fumbled that early. I don't think it would have been any different. There's a, today is the Giants' day, and I think their defense had Dorsey and Pepper Johnson again. You know, we're now seeing some of these young defensive giants. That's Dorsey there who gets the sack. Eric Howard, another rookie, is playing nose tackle. We see Dorsey up there on top coming in there. And this is the thing that the Giants can do now. They can get some of their players out and get some of these young players in in playoff games. This, this is Bubba Paris against Leonard Marshall, and he got him on the pin. He got the takedown, and then he got the pin, like that was like off the top rope. And 17, Taylor after Kemp. Francis with the completion, and nothing doing. Herb Welch there first with an assist from Kenny Hill. Hey, this is no fun for Jeff Kemp to Ooh. come in a game when you, you're down 49 to 3. And the guys are good pass rushers anyway, like Lawrence Taylor and Leonard Marshall and these guys, Carl Banks, playing the game of his life. And you have to go in and try and do this. There's a lot of speculation last week about who would replace Ray Perkins as the head coach at the University of Alabama after he went to Tampa Bay. Well, that question has been answered. It's Bill Curry who was at Georgia Tech. He's the old Green Bay Packers center, wasn't it? Correct. Yep. Incomplete. Intended for Rice. It all began back in July in training camp, in some cases before that. Yesterday's finals, in overtime, the Browns beat the Jets. The Redskins beat the Bears. Today, the Giants are beating up on the 49ers, 49 to three. Still to come, Denver and New England. Running her back to punt. Good kick. Kaki at his own 13. Dodges a couple, gets out to the 20. Let's see who the giant quarterback might be. I think it'll be Rutledge. 12 29 left to play. 49 to 3. The Giants lead it. Tells about that prevent defense, that zone defense. But I tell you, if he watched it today, that zone defense did pretty well, along with the pressure of the front group. Rutledge is the quarterback, and Bruce Son and O.J. Anderson, the running backs. Rusan, the ball carrier. Taylor, Bird, and Banks. Well, you see, when you when you take your shirt out like that, that means you're not going to play anymore. When you go like that, and you don't have your helmet anywhere, and your shirt tail is out like that, that's 
in the rules, it says when you do that, you can't play anymore. So I'm sure that that's the end of Lawrence Taylor's day. At least at the stadium. Well, they're starting the celebrations now. Brian Johnson. Rutledge, the quarterback, Roberts. One of the running backs, that's O.J. Anderson, the former Cardinal. No game. You know, the, the Giants picked up Otis Anderson this year just as, as insurance for Joe Morris. And Joe Morris has had a great year. And Otis Anderson, Bill Parcells says, has really been a valuable part of this team. You know, he does the scout team stuff, hustles all the time, gives everyone a look, understands his position. If Joe Morris is healthy, we don't need you. If Joe goes down, you're a very important part of this team. Third down, eight and a half or nine. Giants at their own 22, Rutledge gives again to Roussan. Roussan. Got only a couple. Larry Roberts made the stop for the 49ers. And here comes Harry Carson seeking out the Gatorade. Now that's a tease. He said it's coming. You don't do it there. McConkie's looking to see what's in there. <laughs> you know, that bucket, though, just like a kicker or something. You know, no one pays any attention all day. It just kind of sits there. Then at the end, when you need it for your celebration, it becomes big. Well, you know that Bill Parcells has got it somewhere stuck in the back of his mind that they're going to pour that thing on him tonight, today. Yeah, and he would like to get two more pours. Next week. And then he'd like to take the bucket and fly it to Pasadena and get another dump ski there. Landetta, Bart Oates is the center. Landetta to punt. Griffin retreats, signals fair catch. Greg Lasker was right in his face. 43-yard punt, no return. The 49ers take over. The Giants lead 49-3. Watt, number 42, tremendous player, and really a great competitor. Today must be really resting on him. Kemp knocks down the official as he tried to get out of the way. The pass intended for Russ Francis. Well, he threw that right at uh, Art Demas, the umpire, I think, was there. Art Demas had to either catch that one or, or try and dodge it. I've always thought that he was one of the good umpires, though, Art Demas. Art. Uh, yeah, he's he's there over the ball. Uh, the thing I was like, he was one of the few umpires in the National Football League, and that's the guy that's standing right there behind the defense. But he was one of the few that sweat. I always liked him because he sweat. Here's Cribs around the corner. Demas himself was a football player at Vanderbilt. Robbie Jones knocked Cribs out of bounds, so he knows about sweat. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, some of the times you just get the feeling that the guys, if they're sweating, they're really working. You know, and if they don't, if they don't sweat, then you wonder what they're doing. But he was always in there, kind of in the middle of the thing. Right there, you see how he is? You kind of fix the hat there. See, he has a little sweat going. You pull some stuff off the nose there and <laughs> kind of hang in there, but that's where all the action happens. See, it all comes right there at you. See, look, they have to key like a middle linebacker. Third and three. Rathman got enough for the first down. I think someday what the 49ers planned to do today was use Tom Rathman and Roger Craig. Two fullbacks in there, and Craig being more the running back and let Rathman be in his blocker. And Rathman is one of the good blockers. He's only a rookie, but he blocks very well. Both from Nebraska. And that kind of goes automatically. It if you're does. from Nebraska and you're a back, you block. First down, 49ers. Kemp again to Cripps. Maybe three yards stopped by Eric Dorsey, number 77. Leonard Marshall. Later today, again, a reminder that uh, by Mark Collins. 
Even Dwight Clark at the end of this game, down 49 to three, still catching passes, still gets upset with himself when he bobbles the ball. I mean, he is really a perfectionist, you know, and he believes that you put your hands out there, poof, you just catch the ball out of the air. And even there, there's no way the 49ers are gonna win this game. You can just see how a perfectionist feels when everything doesn't go perfectly. But of course, today, whoa. Far from perfect. Clark and Rice both left side now. 8-19 left to play. Kemp. Pass picked off by Mark Collins. And they say it was out of bounds. Mark Collins read that one well. Watch, you have the, the deep guy, Clark. Or the Clark's a short guy. Rice is a deep guy. Collins just comes in and splits him. One out, two out. So he had both feet out of bounds. Sometimes they get one in and one out. Sometimes they get both in. Sometimes they get both out. Sometimes they get a knee in and both feet out. Sometimes they get two knees in and two feet out. 8-14 left to play. Next week, and now this is the latest word, the NFL today begins it at 3.30 Eastern time, and then after that, the Giants and the Redskins, right here. Here's Kirk, no place to go. Eric Howard, number 74, was the first Giant there, a loss of five by Cribbs. I think Joe Cribbs played halfback all day today, and I don't think he gained a yard. I would bet when you add it up that he may have like 10 carries or 12 carries and no yards. Never got around the corner. 12 carries for four yards for Joe Cripps. 25 yards for the 49ers. 200 for the Giants. I'll tell you, when you look at every situation, every part of football, the Giants completely dominated the 49ers today. No doubt about it. Intended for Rathman. Bounced off his hands. Today, they are number one. There's part of that offensive line, the two guards, Billy R. and Chris Godfrey. They've really done an outstanding job all year. You know, I mean, for, for Joe Morris's running, not only for his running, but for Phil Simms' pass protection, that unit has been healthy all year, and they've played great all year. And they've been together now for enough years so that everybody is familiar with everybody. And for offensive linemen, that's certainly very important. Runniger's kick goes out of bounds at the three-yard line. That's where the Giants will start to operate. 7-12 left to play, and it's 49-3. to Oh, and John Madden, we're at Giant Stadium. And I think, including the two of us, everyone thought this was going to be a much more even match than the score you just saw, 49 to three. Well, you know, you don't expect a, a Bill Walsh team to get beaten this soundly. I mean, you don't expect them to, for all intent and purposes, to get shut out. And you don't expect the Giants to score 49 points. But, you know, it's just kind of their year. This is the type of thing that everything is going their way. I mean, from the start, they've had good things happen to them. They had that game in Minnesota. They get the big play, the fourth down play. They had some tough games. They had to come back. They won. They had injuries. They still won. There is nothing that the Giants haven't overcome this year. Rutledge, the quarterback. Luzon and Anderson behind him. Nothing doing. Anderson, the ball carrier, hit immediately by Dwayne Board. And again, disappointment for Bill Walsh. You know, after the last loss, when they lost out there, Bill Walsh said it was the most devastating loss that he ever had in his career. When the Giants beat him, when they were ahead 17 or nothing, Giants come back and beat him 21-17. And I would have to think that this one would rank up there higher. But maybe, 
if you could beat this soundly, maybe it doesn't hurt as much as the tight ones. I don't know. Oh, I think it does. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> It hurts more. This is embarrassing. Hand off from Rutledge to Anderson again. Back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there. Michael Carter on the bottom of the pile. A loss of one, perhaps. Lawrence Taylor. The year he's had. Now, he looks like he was thinking about it, about thinking what he's going to do. You know, should he get up and celebrate yet or talk or... What are we going to do next week, or who would have thought? Next week, the Redskins will be here. Clock running 5.45. I'm sure that Joe Jacoby probably watching and remembering the last meeting. And Joe Jacoby has to play with a cast on his hand right. this time. Well, he certainly did extremely well yesterday with a cast and all. Redskins did. Rutledge Roussan by Ronnie Lott. Well, the running stats of the Giants are sure going down yeah, now. The averages. Yeah, they're trying to run out this clock, get the game over, and the 49ers, with all their passing, really aren't cooperating. Harry Carson working around by the Gatorade bucket. He looks mischievous, doesn't he? He looks like you know, he has head. that look that something he's going to do something. Well, he is. Well, we all know that, but I mean, even more than that, that look. It's sort of a look of uh, a guy who thinks he's going to the Super Bowl. Waiting as long as he can is Sean Landetta. Second clock is down to 14 now. Now less. And they'll wait as long as they can to snap it. Don Griffin. Standing back for the 49ers. Nobody got outside. Landetta out of the end zone. Good high kick again. Griffin. Hit the 47. Greg Lasker again. Right in his face. Don't forget, the NFL today follows us. The post game show. I think the 49ers have illegal motion. I think so. They can't even get the ball snapped anymore. Ball start, number 69, offense, first down. Bruce Colley. Pretty good package of cameras there, huh, John? Well, that's that's an NFL record for a you know a small amount. I mean, not for total cameramen, but in a confined area, there's more than there ever has been at a game in New Jersey. Here's Kemp again under pressure, firing Clark incomplete over his head. Tom Flynn back on the coverage. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Giants and the National Football League is prohibited. Yeah, we think about next week and the championship game is going to be here. Bill Parcells has done such an outstanding job with this team, but sometimes I think of the owner, like Wellington Mara. You know, when things were going bad, he took a lot of criticism. Yeah, and now when things are going well, I think those people are critical. I think you have to praise the guy. Well, I think you have to praise Wellington and his nephew, Tim. Well, the same thing. I mean, I know that, you know, when they were bad and when things were going wrong, it was easy to jump on them, and, and everyone did, and and they worked out their problems and, and worked through them, and, and through George Young and with Bill Parcells and with these players, they built a championship team and organization. And they lead 49 to three, third and 10. Hand off to Rathman. Trying to get around the corner. Nothing there, Eric Howard, the strongest man on the giant team there to make the stop. 
I don't think Carson is coming back in the game, do you? No, no, he's in a contest right now, and it's the it's a different hat contest. And, you know, I mean, he had his football hat on, then he had some kind of stocking cap on, and and now he has the other one. He's trying to get this one right here. If he could get this guy's, then he could win the contest. <laughs> Zeke Moad, who scored a touchdown today. As Bill Parcells said, he's back to where he used to be. Brad Benson, that nose is never going to get well until football is over. And then it'll never get, I mean, it'll just heal up, and there's always yeah. going to be a big old scar there. victory bucket. Has Parcell seen him yet? How can a guy like that expect to hide? Parcells is looking for him. He doesn't know who he is. Who is that guy? There's a guy behind the bucket. <laughs> it's 49 to 3. He's got the bucket. They got him occupied. bucket today. See what Harry can see? There's a trick. We're seeing trick. He empties half of it before he dumps it. Did I get him again? Uh, who they get that time? Got Pat Hodgson. No, Belichick. That's a defensive, the defensive coordinator. coordinator. They said you did a heck of a job with our defense today. This is what you get for it. Two minutes remain a moment ago this was the scene outside the 49er locker room Joe Montana suffered a concussion He's being taken to the hospital the 49ers tell us they simply don't want him to fly with that concussion or with the blow that he suffered to the head Rutledge hands off to Russo stopped by Michael Carter one minute, 50 seconds left to play. The Giants, 49. The 49ers, 3. The Redskins will be here. Third down and three. Not much happiness on the 49er sideline. A lot of happiness on the other side of the field and in the stands. Such a good year. They all did. Their 15th victory of the year today. Russo. Tonight on CBS starts with Satan. After that, it's my mother. Giants 49, the 49ers 3. Coming up on the NFL today, the postgame show, Brent and Dick Vermeil will have highlights of the game and we'll talk live, hopefully, with Redskin coach Joe Gibbs from Washington. Plus player interviews and the group looks ahead at the NFC Championship game. 